Hi, I'm Marion Infante. I'm an occupational therapist. I'm also a Pennsylvania health educator, and I'm also a therapeutic clown. So um, I'm going to do a little video here on tele-intervention. And I'd, I'd like to thank everyone that's helped me with this, because this isn't just my knowledge. This is the knowledge of a collaboration of people. All the wonderful people I work with at Montgomery County Intermediate, you know, all the therapists have given ideas, we come together and we get things done. And then also, I'm studying my doctorate at Misericordia University. So I've gotten a lot of, from the professors and the colleagues there, I've gathered a lot of current knowledge and able to incorporate that into my tele-interventions. So OTs, generally, we, you know, we do adaptive skills, fine motor, social skills, sensory, and even incorporating interoception into our sensory now. So we're working on all this in the context of learning routines. That's important in education. So we have to design a service that is very comprehensive. It has to be well integrated, and it, it has to occur in the context of the interdisciplinary collaboration. So just as I have to try to incorporate all my student goals and other team strategies into my sessions. Our sensory set, our sensory strategies as therapists can be incorporated and used by the entire team. So talking with the team and working as a team is really important for our students. So the number one thing is relationship building. So when you go to develop online even, you have to start with a relationship and it has to be evidence informed. So some of the things I do is what's the child totally interested in? So I might blow bubbles from a dinosaur if they love dinosaurs. And if you don't have a fancy dinosaur like mine, just take a bubble wand and hold it against whatever the interest is of the child. And you can blow a bubble, get their attention. Uh, you can use uh, different, all different things to get their attention. So. I'm going to show you, I don't do any videos in my sessions because the American Academy of Pediatrician in the latest research is suggesting that children should only have an hour or two of video time. Face-to-face -face isn't considered quite as bad as video time because it's more, we, we're working on those social skills and most of our students need social skills. So I use no videos, I use music, but I don't put the music video up. I try to sing it, even though I'm not the best singer, but the kids do sing along with you. And um, so I'm gonna show you though, what I do show them is a visual schedule. So I'm gonna, that's the one thing I'm gonna share with you is a visual schedule for, for this program. So this is what I'm um, doing it on, supporting students with disabilities in virtual environments and incorporating sensory strategies and sensory path into a tele-intervention and the virtual learning environments. So here we go. This is what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to give an example of parent instructions. I'm going to give an example of a visual schedule, a brief discussion on relationship building health standards, research findings, and then I'm going to actually show a video where I demonstrate some of the sensory strategies with a student. So here's the paper I send to the parents. I send them a visual schedule that they can actually do have with the parent. I ask, I, I also teach them what the strategies are. One of the strategies is to have the child pack a book bag as if they're going to school. That gives a little heavy way to start with. It kind of centers them, lets them know that we're not coming here to watch a video, we're coming to go to school. So I try to get them to pack and they can put things for their finger manipulation in there. Uh, you know, zipper bags, the things with covers so that they can have it packed for school. Then I also go over what we need to have available to do the eyes. And I send this with every lesson. And I basically just have to change out maybe a few things in the schedule each time. Uh, every time I try to use a book bag jumping wall or table push-ups and counting. We use like little hand prints that I have them make for table push-ups. So in the first session, like I said, it's relationship building. So I'll maybe we won't necessarily start the, the video the uh, first one with the 
sensory paths. We'll start developing the sensory paths. We might do the, just the jumping. Then maybe we will make some hands so that we can have them on the table for future sessions. Uh, I usually do the spinning and counting. And that's how we talk about interception. Because when you spin your stomach and you can get into a little bit of interception conversation with that. So that's very helpful. Then to get into other things I show the parents ahead, because you also want to look at ergonomics, how they set up their computers so they can actually see you. Also sitting. So if we're doing spinning, sometimes the kids will sit in a spinning chair and have, I'll recommend a footrest. If they're at a big table, then they might as well use a spinning chair if available. But a lot of times I recommend a small table, and I'm going to show you and the children if they have an easel available. I ask them to have an easel available. And you can actually use a recycle lesson and make a box that gives them armrests so that having a chair with armrests sometimes helps them know where to focus, which can be made out of a simple box and placed in a chair, and they can decorate it. So that's another easy strategy to do. You can use uh, then you get into some oral motor strategies. You also might tell them to focus in a separate room, not to be in the room where all the toys are, because that's very distracting. So for oral motor, I recommend a water bottle. You can put ice if they have one and a straw to sip. Uh, I no longer recommend jewelry, jewelry necklaces because the FDA said uh, put out warnings against them. However, if a child really needs some kind of chewing thing, I have them put a container next to them that they can just grab and put on. Some children, I'll, I'll clip it to, into a pocket. They have a pocket that they can put it in when it's not in use and then pull it out. But, um, so that could be right at their desk as they're doing their Zoom meeting with you or their tele intervention. I prefer to use like a carrot because I'm trying to promote more vegetables. I'm also a health educator. So the other thing is you do not want to ask them to have candy or food. Uh, it's not evidence-based anymore that the current wellness plans actually prohibit using candies and food with children during lessons. So we have to come up with more ways to engage them. Like I said, we can blow bubbles to get them engaged. You put a wand, you can uh, use pinwheels, give them choices of colors to blow. That's another oral motor, getting them to blow, pretend to blow the bubbles, blow this. You can have eggs that they open. Here's an egg. They can blow and open an egg like so and have them blow away the things. That's always helpful. You can have a fidget bracelet. You can have the spinning chair and things like that. So right now I'm going to join in with a student. And then you can have an idea of how the lesson goes. Hello. Hello. Hi, Aubrey. Guess what? Remember my friend, Willie? He's missing. So I got my book bag. I'm going to pack my bag and go look for him. Do you think you can help me look for him? All right. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to jump over here. But I hear you have a trampoline. Do you have a trampoline? Yeah. All right. So I want you to jump up high and look around, see if he's in the sky. I'm going to jump down low on my jumping path, OK? Jump 10 times, okay? Here we go. I got my path right here. I'm going to jump 10 times down my path. One, two, three, four, six, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I still didn't find him. He's not there. So I need your, I need your help still. Uh, I, I'm going to push... This wall, see if he's hiding here. Can you push down on your table? Do you have some handprints on your table? Nope. Got a couple of hands? Okay, push down. Let's do 10 here. Try to push in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I found the baby. This is Willie's baby. We're talking about Mother's Day today, but we still don't have Willie. So let's try spinning around, okay? And look, when you turn around and stop, and we'll look around, okay? You ready? 
Can you show me number one? All right, good job. And spin around and show me number two. Okay, you're good at this. Spin around again, number three. Number four, whoa. And finally, five, high five. Oh, there he is. But you know what? That made me a little dizzy. Do you ever get hungry and you get that feeling in your stomach when you're hungry? Do you ever feel like that? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> and then, so I spun around, I feel a little dizzy. So I'm going to sit down. And now we got our friend, Willie. Can we sing him our opening song that we all? Yeah. Okay. start with a little story. We're today we're talking about Mother's Day. So I have a story to read. And we're, like I said, Willie's here and his baby monkey. Because the, the animals and their babies and that's what our story's about. So first off, we have our hippo. There you go. Good job. And you can have a drink for your flower. Huh? Good job. Good job. Drink for your flower. Now, I have some flowers. What's your, which color flower do you like? Purple. Purple, of course. We love purple. Okay. So, can we take a deep breath and blow? And a deep breath. Good job. So we're going to put all our materials back in our book bag. Okay. I'm going to close up my crayon box. You got to put your things back in your box. I'm going to pack everything back up like we're leaving school because we're going to do a, we're going to pretend we're a flower. So we're packing up. That was pretty fun. I'm going to do something else just like this. But it's it's gonna fun, be huh? Okay, well, we can do another it's lesson another day. It's but pollen pack today. <laughs> pack yeah. everything in your book bag. Can I put my something with a pen? Mm -hmm. now, I, now what do I do with this? Okay, your book, oh, your book, well, you can leave your water on the table. You don't want to get that in the book bag. That'll, that we're going to pretend we are a growing flower next. So, to do that, do you know the child pose? The child pose? Yes, you come back, I'm going to come back here. You got to get on the floor and put your arms out down like you're really small, like a mouse. Really? Yoga pose. Did you get down a little? Whoa. Yeah. All right, you stand up. You're gonna do that, all right? So hold on, we're gonna put the, we're gonna get up, we're gonna move the camera so you can still see each other, all right? While you, I don't have our yoga mat down here or else I set it up for you, but you'll be okay. Remember, you gotta be underneath. On. Now, we're gonna be a down feet, planted in the ground. Take a deep breath. Like you're sucking in the water. And then slowly up on your knees. Good job. Arms up. All the way up. Good job. And that's it. Up all the way tall, like a tall flower stem. Good job. Now, now that you're tall, get your one skinny leg. Your stem's getting skinny. Pick up one leg. And one leg, flower open. Bend your knee, 
Bend See? your knee. Bend your knee. That's it. You can keep it close to your foot if you need to. You can have it near your foot. And then your flower opens. Open your flower. All right, now try it on the other foot. See if you can put the other foot down and bend your knee. Good job. Wow, your flower looks great. 